Peter had been out fishing the first time Jesus got into his boat and asked him to put out into deep water. From now on, Jesus said to him, you will be catching people. When they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Maybe Peter was trying to go back to the way things had been. But now they had been fishing all night long and had caught nothing. One thing we know in the Gospel of John, something that John tells us in the very first chapter, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the night. And at the Last Supper, after receiving the piece of bread, Judas immediately went out and John adds, and it was night. After Judas went out, Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus answered, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Will you lay down your life for me, Jesus answered. Very truly I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. There comes an age when we know that our shortcomings in faith have been denials and that our denials have been betrayals. Judas has already gone out into night and Peter will soon follow seeking some warmth from the darkness at a fire. We find Peter in the courtyard of the high priest's house, warming himself around a charcoal fire. And one of the servant girls says to him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? Three times they questioned him, and three times Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. And it dawns on Peter that he has turned his back on the very one who loves him. In his poem, The Little Gidding, T.S. Eliot captures Peter's dilemma. He writes, The only hope, or else despair, lies in the choice of pyre, or pyre, to be redeemed from fire by fire. Who then devised the torment? Love. Love is the unfamiliar name behind the hands that wove the intolerable shirt of flame which human power cannot remove. We only live, only suspire, consumed by either fire or fire. Peter left that first charcoal fire a broken man, weeping bitterly and all alone. But now... Peter finds himself sitting around another charcoal fire with some fish on it and some bread. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Three times the question is asked, and three times Peter insists, Lord, you know that I love you. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you did not wish to go. We forever live between two fires and one of them will have us. And as much as we long for the fire of the spirit of resurrection, our frail self defaults to the safe fire at the beginning of the night. And our older selves find our hands are bound. We're not in control. The grace is that we can live until the morning. In the binding and taking where we do not wish to go, we are pulled away from the safe little fire someone has constructed for us we are taken toward the fire of resurrection. And maybe that's why Peter 
had gone out fishing. It had been on the Sea of Galilee that Peter had left everything and followed Jesus. He was probably hoping that the Lord would meet him there again.